Hello and welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to do just a real quick video on repairing a pin. This is the front half of a slimline pin that I made somewhere between two and three years ago. And the young man who has had it has taken really good care of it. I was noticing it's not beat up at all. So I know there's nothing he did that caused this. I know what the problem is. I used medium CA glue to glue the tube into the blank. And that CA glue over time has just given loose. So what's happened is his blank now can slide right off the tube. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to rough this tube up a little bit. It's still got, it's kind of sticky. I guess that's residue from the CA glue. I'm probably going to clean it off with a little bit of uh, acetone. And then we're going to rough it up a little bit with some sandpaper, being very careful not to mess with the nib or the transmission. And then we're going to use a little bit of, an, of epoxy and we're going to put some epoxy on there and very carefully put the blank back on because we don't want to get epoxy all over the, the pin components or especially over the transmission where we can't eject and retract the ink. And we're going to get this pin fixed back up and put back together. Then we'll run it across the buffing wheel and just kind of buff it up and give it a nice little shine, kind of refresh it a little bit. And I think this young man will be very happy. And with epoxy, this pin, this will never happen again. Uh, this pin will never let loose again with epoxy. The cap of the pin has no issue, and I would like to go ahead and fix that as well, but I'm a little concerned that if I try to knock it apart, I could damage the uh, blank, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to fix the front half, and I'm going to let them know, you know, obviously what the issue is, and I'm going to tell him, hey, if you ever have trouble, you bring it back, and I'll be glad to fix it permanently, and I guarantee with the epoxy, it is not going to come apart. So I am not going to mess with the cap today. I'm actually going to be fixing two pins today, and both of them have the same issue. The blank has separated from the tube. I'm going to start by using a little acetone to clean the tubes because there is a residue on them. This will not hurt the brass tube or the pin components, but we don't want to use this under any circumstances on the uh, blanks because it will mess the blanks up. Now I'm wearing a rubber, you can see it turning the glue white. I'm just going to kind of rub until I get that glue off there. It's just a, just kind of a, a residue of glue left over. I'm just going to rub that off. And I am wearing a glove because that acetone is pretty nasty stuff. I should probably have a glove on my right hand as well, but I'm really not getting the acetone uh, on there as bad as I am on my left hand. I can feel it's really cold uh, through the glove. I'm just going to check them both over. They both look really good. There's a little bit of residue at the end here. Okay, I've got, I've got the tubes cleaned up. Both of my blanks have been cleaned. I'm gonna go ahead now and scuff them up again. This one I need to be extra careful of because I don't want to damage the transmission or the uh, nib. So I'm going to just kind of scuff very carefully about midway up the tube. I'm not going to worry about the end of the tube because you can see the scratches I'm putting in it. That will give the uh, epoxy something to grip to, and we should be all right. I don't. I just don't want to get down here and scratch his nib or mess his transmission, so I think that should be good. With my son's pen, you'll notice the nib popped right out while I was cleaning it. What I think happened there, this is a learning experience. Years ago, when I first started making pins, I used a barrel trimmer. So this would be in your vise on your drill press, and you would drill your hole, and maybe I would be making 10, 12 pins at a time, so I would throw the blank aside. Then I'd come back later, put the barrel trimmer in, and I'd barrel trim them all. When you did that, if you didn't line the blank up exactly the way it was lined up when you drilled it, let's say it was, it could, and I'm over-exaggerating, but let's say it was tipped this way just a little bit, and when you brought it back to barrel trim, you tipped it this way a little bit, the barrel trimmer didn't go straight down through the blank, so it wallowed out the end of the tube, which made for a very sloppy fit. Now you can see that goes, I can push that all the way on there by hand. So it had a very sloppy fit to start with. Going forward, what I started doing is instead of a barrel trimmer, I started using a sanding jig on my disc sander. The tube will slide onto a punch and then you just push it out and let it touch the sanding disc and there's no way to warp the tube and you get a nice square uh, end on your tube because there's no way you can take it at an angle when you've got this thing mounted 90 degrees to your sanding disc. So I don't have that issue anymore. This is not a problem. It's got, it's got a snug fit, it's just not a tight fit. So what we'll do is once we get the blank glued 
Actually, what we'll do first is I'll glue the nib onto the tube and then we'll put the blank on and we'll let it all dry together. Um, I may actually put a clamp on here just to hold this. Uh, just, just, it doesn't have to be super tight, but just something to hold it so it doesn't move. And this will fix the problem and the nib will never come out again. This pin doesn't have that problem because it wasn't oiled out and I got a nice tight fit when I pressed it into the pin tube. Uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to move this out of the way. I'll go ahead and get a little bit of epoxy mixed up. Uh, I probably won't put that on camera, but the way this epoxy works is I put equal amounts of the epoxy resin and equal amounts of the hardener onto this tape. I'll mix it up with a matchstick, and then we're going to spread it. And you'll see this part. I'm going to spread it um, on the tubes. Actually, I'm going to spread it inside the blank, and then we're going to slide the blanks on the tube and work them slowly up on there, moving them back and forth uh, to get the epoxy spread around, to get a nice spread of epoxy. And then we'll set them aside to dry. And I'll show all of that in detail as I'm working. I just probably will not show the mixing of the epoxy because that's rather boring. I've got my epoxy fairly well mixed up. I like to just put this painter's tape on my bench and it's probably two layers thick so that I don't have any seams and mix epoxy this way because I can just pull it up and throw it away and I don't have to worry about you know having a board laying around with epoxy on it or anything like that. Um, what I'm going to do now is I've got this little, this little I guess it's a, a, like a pipe cleaner, um, and I'm going to go ahead and just run it down through the center of the blanks and clean anything out of the blanks that might be in there um, dust or particle wise. And with this first pin, this is my son's pin, I'm just going to put a little bit of epoxy around the inside lip and we'll go ahead and press this nib back on. And now what I want to do is I want to put, let me, uh, that's right. I had to remember for a second which end was the bottom. What I'm going to do is put a little bit of epoxy inside of the blank. I'll try to get it up in there a little bit. Remember, it's not going to take a lot with this small blank. And then we're, you know what I want to do? I just thought of something. This is Play-Doh. I'm going to put some Play-Doh down and I'm going to stick the end of my tube in the Play-Doh. And the idea is I want something to keep from getting the, the uh, epoxy inside of the Play-Doh. And now I need to look again real quick and find out. Yeah, it was this end. Sorry. I'm just going to kind of twist it and work it around. And I can feel it as it goes on. It's kind of rough because of the scratches. And then it starts, starts slipping pretty easily on there. And there we go. Let me get a little clamp. I'm going to go ahead and wipe the epoxy off the end of the blank, making sure I don't leave any on the blank. Then I'm going to pick this little Play-Doh out of here so that it doesn't get epoxy into the blank. But that should have kept it from getting inside my tube. Some people use potatoes. There's a lot of different things you can use. And it just keeps the epoxy out of the tube because if you get epoxy in there, then you've got to clean it out. And I didn't want to mess with having to clean it out. All right, there's the, that's it for the Play-Doh. Wipe the tube off again. Make sure everything looks good. I don't see any, I don't see any epoxy on the on the uh, blank anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and just use just a small little clamp, and I don't need a lot of pressure. All I really want is enough pressure just to keep that from sliding apart. Uh, we're not really pressing it together or anything. There we go. And I'll just lay this aside to dry. We're ready for the second blank. And this one, I think what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna put a little epoxy on the tube. And the reason why I'm gonna do this is I do not wanna get epoxy on that transmission. If I get epoxy on that transmission, uh, we're done. And that's not good. So I'm just gonna spread it around. I'm gonna try to make it as thin as possible, spreading it up and down the tube, okay? And now, make sure I have none on my fingers, and I don't. We're going to slide this on here like this, and I'm just going to work it up and down a little bit. And I can see that some epoxy is bubbling up at the bottom of the, of the blank. We just I'm going to twist it and try it. There we go. By twisting it as I roll it down on there, what happens is the epoxy, I stopped about there. It rolled back under the blank, and there is no epoxy on the outside of that blank. I grabbed a piece of painter's tape. 
Once again, I'm just going to check and make sure there's no epoxy on there at either end. It looks good. And I'm going to put this on the blank and I'm going to push the nib in. I'm just going to put a piece of tape on there. And my reasoning behind that is that's like the clamp. It's going to hold the, the blank and the nib together. I'll get this area cleaned up and then I'll come back and we got to do a little work on the back half of the blank. Notice how it's got that little dent in it. We need to round that out and I'll show you how I'm going to do that here in just a minute. Let me get this cleaned up and we'll be ready to go. I've brought my punches over and we're just going to start by grabbing a punch that is slightly smaller than the diameter of the hole. I'm just going to kind of roll it around in there a little bit. I'm just going to keep doing that and working up until I get to the punch that is exactly that size. I do believe it's this one, which isn't going to go in there just yet. So let's bring this one back. There we go. Just trying to round that hole out as nicely as possible. And the final punch, and I'll tell you, that piece is loose. There we go. There we go. That punch just went in. That hole is perfectly round now. And I just pulled it out of the pin, which kind of stinks because guess what? I just put my epoxy away. <laughs> As I was rounding this blank out, you noticed that the trim ring pulled free. That is probably the same phenomenon that I had on the front half of the pin where the nib came out. I was using a barrel trimmer when I made this pin and I probably went at a bit of an angle and wallowed that out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give this about 20 minutes to dry. Then we'll come back, mix up a tiny bit more epoxy and we'll glue this into the cap as well as the front half of the pin. And we will not have to worry about this piece coming loose again. The epoxy has had about an hour to dry on these pins. Um, I went ahead and mixed up a small batch because I shouldn't need much here. And what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and glue this center band back into the cap and the lower half of this pin. Once again, I'm going to use my little uh, cleaning tool and I can't get really far in there, but I want to clean any, any residue out. This time I'm going inside of the uh, brass tube and that'll probably knock the Play-Doh out as well if there's any Play-Doh residue. Yeah, it's nice and clean inside of there now. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure, now you'll notice this piece has a longer section and a shorter section. The longer section goes into the cap of the pin and the shorter section goes into the uh, lower half of the pin. And I was able to unthread my nib, which is good. Uh, I was worried about that because I thought, you know, I hope I didn't actually have any uh, epoxy uh, ooze out and then glue the nib to the blank because then I wouldn't be able to change the ink. But let's go ahead and we'll put a little bit of, I think what I'm gonna do is put the epoxy on the inside of the blank. That way I don't have any that's gonna squish out. I'm gonna use this. I can't press that out. I thought I could maybe press that out. I was worried about the uh, the mechanism. Yeah, because I got epoxy inside of there. So, uh oh, I'm really worried about this one now. There we go. Oh, look at that! I just shoved the entire mechanism out the other end of the tube, which that's fine with me. I'm okay with that. I can press it back in. But uh, the issue was I got a little bit of epoxy that went. Um, inside of the blank and it got on the bottom of this so I'm wiping it off right now my fingers have epoxy on them I'll go clean them real quick and then we'll glue the bottom half of this pin together we'll let it dry and then we can press all of these parts back into the pin I've got my hands cleaned off and I'm gonna go ahead now and put some epoxy on the inside of the lower tube Just wipe that off there we go I'm going to put this together. Whoops. I'm trying not to get the epoxy that's on my finger onto the blank. I'm going to go grab a clamp and I'm going to just put a little pressure to hold these together. We don't need much pressure. I just want enough to keep them from sliding apart and I want to make sure that they are not uh, at an angle. You know that I'm putting undue pressure and causing one of the blanks to be at an angle. They look pretty good right there. We'll just set this aside to dry. I'm going to double check this and make sure that I got all the epoxy off of it. And actually, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to unthread this. This is the, the top of the pin where you, the plunger, and I'm going to take this out. And the reason why is I just want to make sure 
Yeah, see there's some epoxy on the table there. If I got any epoxy up in here at all, I want to make sure that I get it out of the uh, inside of that pin so that it can function properly. So we're just going to leave it all apart. This looks pretty good. There was a, there was a little bit. I could feel it on my fingers uh, when I forced this up into the... Um, I tell you, what, we're just going to leave the whole thing apart. That way, everything, if, if there's any residue of epoxy, it'll dry on there, but it won't be on anything to where I have to worry about parts being glued together. So we're just going to let this blank set finish drying. When it's done, we'll come back, we'll press the um, clip and cap section into the pin along with the rest of the components, and we should be finished. I'm getting ready to reassemble the pin, and I went ahead and ran the cap over the buffing wheel just to kind of polish it up. And you can tell the difference. Notice how dull the front half is versus how shiny the back half is. That buffing wheel makes an incredible difference. So it's just, I just want to kind of restore the pin and make it look really nice as it goes back. So I'm going to go ahead and run the front half over the buffer, and uh, then we'll get this pin reassembled, and it will be ready to uh, be taken back to the young man who it belongs to. The blue slimline pin is complete and it's reassembled. I went ahead and ran it across the buffing wheel just to kind of clean it up a little bit. I think it turned out beautiful. I'm going to set it aside and we're going to work on reassembling my son's pin. I'm ready to assemble my son's pin. I took it over to the buffing wheels and buffed it up. Gave it a really nice shine. We'll start by putting the nib on the end of the pin. I'll put the black cap back on the ink refill. We'll grab our spring and we'll put it onto the refill and I'm going to drop it in. These parts are already together. They go up into this little white sleeve. The spring goes on top and then this piece threads into the spring or into the threaded area on the top of this little post. There we go. Whoops. Ah, that's actually fairly tough to do. I tell you what, let me do it like this. Let me slide it into here because I can use the ink refill. There we go. Normally you assemble this from the bottom of the pin Well, I thought I had the threads going. You know what? Actually, what I want to do, <clears throat> I want to go ahead and press this piece in first, and then we'll thread this on. Because what has to happen is uh, this: the, the uh, click mechanism on the back, or the, the uh, push button, threads on into these threads here. But that spring is what has to uh, push against this to allow it to uh, push back once the mechanism clicks and locks in place. So I'm going to go ahead and press this clip assembly into the back of my pin. We're not going to give it a whole lot of pressure. It shouldn't take a whole, whole bunch. There we go. And with that pressed into place, now we'll get back to work trying to get this, there we go, end piece threaded in. There we are, that's much better, much easier. And the pin is fixed. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's not something that I normally have to do, but I did have an issue with CA glue letting loose on these two pins and I had to fix them and I thought, well, I'll go ahead and record it because maybe someone else out there has a similar problem and they can look at what I did and uh, modify it to work for them and be able to fix one of their pins. So I couldn't be happier with how they both turned out. I think they're gorgeous pins. I'm glad to see them repaired and I'm glad that they're going to go back into someone's hand and be used. That's what it's all about. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the shop tonight. 
I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a wonderful evening.